Greetings. Today I'm doing a video on converting my color images to black and white. There's several different methods in raw therapy to convert our images. Also on the rawpedia site it gives us recommendations to make changes using color toning and the LAB adjustments. But I'm going to go about this a different way. Also I'm going to use the color information in the image to make further adjustments. To start with I have a photo here. I'm going to use two images for an example. So we have two different lighting conditions. So a portrait photo and the first one we saw here. A picture of the buildings. Before I start I'll just make a few adjustments. I'll just crop the image. Just going to pull in slightly. And to experiment with this as well, you may want to bring your photos in as neutral and when we go to the black and white tool, you'll see the different options that we have. So, okay. I'll just, so that's the crop, I'll just scroll in and straighten this up a little bit. It's a slight change there. Come to the framing so I can get a rule of thirds. I'll just, I'm happy with that adjustment, so I'll just turn the rule of thirds off. If we wanted to make it simple for ourselves, we could just go to the exposure tab and just reduce the saturation and maybe increase the contrast if that's all that's required. Somebody, somebody may be happy with this conversion from, from their color images and export the image. But for myself, I want a little bit more flexibility for further adjustments. I'll just return that. I'll come over to the color tab. I'll minimize this and I'm just going to activate the black and white tool. We can see there the change. What I'll do is I'll take a snapshot here. I'll turn that off again. Just come to the exposure tab and just decrease the saturation. Take another one so we can see the difference between just reducing the saturation and activating the black and white tool. So I'll go back to the black and white and there's the reduction in saturation in the exposure. Let's go back and forth and we can see the histogram moving. Also I have my histogram on, I've turned off the red, green and blue just so I have my luminance histogram here. So back to the black and white tool here. See the method by default is desaturation. We have gamma correction and a before and after curve here. I'm not going to change any of this, but I'm going to go into the next method, which is the luminance equalizer. By default, we can see the luminance equalizer set to linear. So I'll just click on the drop down menu and open the equalizer. And if you've been using raw therapy, you'd be familiar with this site here. Also again we have gamma correction and the before curve and after for further adjustments to the image. For here I'm just going to click on the crosshairs in the equalizer and I'll click on the blue sky, hold down control and left click and we can see on the equalizer it gives us our new position so I'll just pull that down for this example. We can see how it changes the image in the equalizer here. And this may be enough for somebody that's editing an image, may just want to pull down the sky and to make it simple. Also, we can click on the sand and be more selective. But I'll zero that out. Next, on the methods, I want to select the channel mixer. And this is where we have a lot more options within the black and white tool. By default, the preset is set to relative RGB. And if I click on the menu again, we can see the different options that it gives us. I've experimented with a few of these, but for this example, I'm just going to leave it on relative for this example, but I will change it to portrait. And just below, we can see the RGB values change. So if I go back to the relative, just reset that. Where we started, we can see the values here. And if we change it to the portrait, we can see the values change once again. If I choose another one, landscape, we can see the values change. So I'm just going to come back to relative and I'll reset that. And I'm going to come down to the color filters 
here in the color filters, if you've been doing photography for, for a while, you'll know that we have different options for filters for our lenses, such as neutral density or variable NDs or UV filters. Here we have the option of color filters, and we can see written here the color filter simulates shots taken with a colored filter placed in front of the lens. I'm going to open this up, go through these one by one so we can see the effect on the image. So I'll click on the red, we can see the changes as we go and also the histogram how it changes, how the filter is affecting the image overall. Go through the next one, red and yellow, yellow. Also if we keep an eye on the RGB values as we change the filters the values will change as well. So yellow, green and yellow, green, blue and green and purple. As we can see as well we have the RGB we can change here if we want to make further adjustments the gamma correction and before and after curve as well. Also in the presets here if we change it to something else some of these options are not available and they do change. It also gives you extra options depending on which one you choose. I'll just open one up that has that example and we can see the extra options here that it gives us. But I'm just going to come back to the relative RGB where we were. I'll reset that, come back to my purple. So for this example, I may want to put a little bit more of contrast in the image, depending on what I have in mind and the final result that I want. If I'm happy with this, and this is my final result, if I put a example a vignette, want it a bit stronger, and reduce the feathering, or add a little more contrast, and then just export the image as a TIFF or a JPEG, depending on what I have in mind for the final result. So I'll just turn that off, and I'll go to the other image and we can see the different results it has for different lighting situations. One of the other options we have as well is film simulation to create an effect as well. And I'll show that shortly. But when I bring my images into raw therapy, I have a custom profile that I created. And if you don't know how to create one, I have a video explaining how to do that. And also other photographers have covered this subject, how to create a profile for yourself. So I'll come back to the black and white tool, activate that. You can see the desaturation again. So what I'll do here, I'll leave it at desaturation. I'll open up the equalizer here so we can use the color information in the photo to make changes. So I'm going to come over to V for the lightness values. Click on the crosshairs. I'll hold down control and click on the background. It gives us our new position once again on the equalizer. I'm going to raise this up. You see the effect there on the background. If I take it down, you can see there. I'll raise that up. Next, I'll select the skin tones here. So hold control and left click once again. Gives us our new position. I just want to take it down slightly. You can see the skin there brightening up or taking that down. I just want to take it down slightly. I'll turn that off. That's the before. That's the after using the equalizer. And I want to put a film simulation. We have the option for black and white film simulation. So I'll activate this and click the drop down menu. And just in the black and white here, I want to come down to Ilford. I like the HP5 3 Plus. Also, if I think it's too strong, I can always turn down the strength of the simulation and increase it again. So I'll remove that, increase there. I'll just select another one for an example. Click on the XP2. You can see very different. Select another one. Very different results using these simulations. You see the changes there. I'll go back to the Milford HB53 Plus. Turn down that a little bit. I might just come back to the 
highlight compression and bring down the highlight slightly. So we have several different methods converting our color images to black and white in raw therapy.